need to get a stand so that you can see this cool mug. I can stay. I should do it like this. <laughs> what do you say, Mr. Spock? He thinks this whole video is illogical. Actually, I have no idea why you're watching. You're probably trying not to do your homework or something. There's my yellow shirt here underneath. Everybody loves babies. If you haven't seen the documentary Babies, you should check it out. Four babies from four parts of the world. It shows their first year of life and it's very cool. I used to work at a movie theater. I said to my manager, Caitlin, I said, can I please have that shirt? Um, but uh, then she just gave it to me because I asked nicely. It's promotional gear. I'm promoting the documentary. Also, there's a good documentary out on Netflix. It's called The Beginning beginning of life. Similar to babies, but totally different. It talks more about development, stuff like that. Babies, it's just an hour and a half of footage of these kids. There's no interviews, there's no narrator. Beginning of life is a different thing. It's educational, it talks about cognitive science, it talks about development. I got tipped off to it because I get my all my good information from places like um, Facebook, and I follow The Atlantic on Facebook, and so there was a thing on my newsfeed from The Atlantic. Stop clicking your little claws, doggy. Okay, so for learning time to... Kirby, that collar. Come here, I'm gonna take it off. Okay, you say hi. For learning time today, we're gonna talk about circumnavigation. Circumnavigation. Let's break it down. You can break down the word like circum, like circle, like around, and then I'm out. Is it snowing by you? There's snow on the ground. Snow on the ground. Oh, I gotta get more Christmas tree in there. That makes it festive. Circum like around, like a circle. Navigation means I type this into the computer, w.google thing. Accurately ascertaining one's position and planning and following a route. Or option two, the passage of ships. So the passage of ships around, like for example, finding a way around the world. In 1492, Columbus sit, that's where it gets a little bit Bunky. This is why you read books. People always say to me, what they say to me is usually, Daniel, stop derailing conversations with all of your needless trivia. And that's why I ran home and started a YouTube channel. Anyway, I just finished a book, The Great Soul of Siberia, and it's about the Siberian tiger by this guy named Suyong Park. If I'm not mistaken, before he started, there was like one hour of actual film footage of wild Siberian tigers. He has collected something like, sorry, he's collected something like 10,000 hours Maybe not, maybe 1,000 hours. He's collected so much footage of Siberian tigers in the wild. He's like the world's leading expert. He wrote this book, it has some pictures in it. It's almost like reading Ralph Waldo Emerson or something. He's very kind of like meditative. Spring was off at a sprint before I knew it. The new warmth brought the azaleas, which were followed by foxtails on the riverbank. Leaves and shoots painted the land green and flowers drank in the descriptive. It's sometimes it's a little bit in my mind, like maybe a little bit, if I can say too poetic. Anyway, next book that I'm reading now, currently, An Indomitable Beast, The Journey, wait, what's it called? An Indomitable Beast, The Remarkable Journey of the Jaguar. And this one is by Alan Rabinowitz. If you don't know, he's a cool guy. In this, he brings in archaeology, anthropology, the history of migrations. He gets into cultures in the, the Americas. Jaguars are limited to South and Central America, right? Mexico is North America. Actually, they're still one jaguar surviving, unless he died like yesterday in Arizona, I think, or maybe California. Anyway, he's a really good writer, Alan Rabinowitz. If you're not into reading, you should check out, if you like listening to stories like podcasts, Radio Lab. you can look up the, the podcast of their episode on zoos. Alan Rabinowitz has a story in it, and it's a really good story. You can find it, I'm pretty sure, on the internet. Radio Lab. Let's... He's the CEO of the conservation organization called Panthera, which is a conservation organization for the world's big cats. Panthera is the genus of the big cats of the world, of which there are five. They are, the biggest one is tigers, also my favorite. I read this book about the Siberian tiger, which is also the biggest of all the subspecies of tigers. Number two biggest is the lion. Jaguar is the third biggest, also my second favorite. That's just kind of where I am right now. I'm learning to live with that. And then the leopard and then the snow leopard. Now, lest you think that the snow leopard is a subspecies of leopard, it's actually its own thing. It was not determined to be part of the Panthera genus until quite recently. And, and this is very interesting, the snow leopard is a closer relative of the tiger than to other leopards, according to science. And I think the snow leopard is probably my third favorite big cat. Circumnavigation, that whole Columbus thing. Remember like 10 minutes ago when I talked about Columbus? 
1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. The date of the seemingly indisputable fact that when Christopher Columbus and his small fleet of Spanish ships set out to prove the world was not flat, they discovered America. First of all, that flat earth thing, he says it right here. He goes, I think my teachers believed much of the myth. That flat earth thing. I was tipped off to this by a, a National Geographic from like last year or something. If you go to Wikipedia and type in myth, no, myth, no, myth of the flat earth. There it is, right there. The myth of the flat earth is a modern misconception that the prevailing cosmological view during the Middle Ages in Europe saw the earth as flat instead of spherical. During the Middle Ages, virtually all scholars maintained the spherical viewpoint first expressed by the ancient Greeks. Okay, oh, I forgot to zoom out. Hold on. Okay, there we go. No educated person in the history of Western civilization from the third century onward believed that the earth was flat. And this guy ascribes the popularization of the flat earth myth to histories by John Draper, Andrew White, and Washington Irving. Washington Irving? The Rip Van Winkle guy? We believe that they thought that the earth was flat because of the Rip Van Winkle guy. I remember that story when I was in like fifth, sixth grade. Columbus, because he, he was gonna go this way and everybody else thought if you sail this way, you're gonna fall off the earth because it's flat. That's why we're having learning time. But there's also the whole Columbus started the circumnavigation thing. What are some relevant data. Alan helps us out. Let's hit some high points. Years that ensued after grade school, I would periodically read of new discoveries that would further destroy the cherished myth of Columbus and add to the growing list of evidence that early explorers from Africa, Asia, Europe, even Oceania had made trans-oceanic voyages and contacted the indigenous people of America long before Columbus accidentally bumped into the New World. People from all over the place hit the Americas before Columbus hit the Americas. From Europe, Africa, Asia, some of the other evidence of pre-Columbus and voyages of the America made for good storytelling. Skulls found off the coast of Chile. He doesn't embellish on that. We'll have to look that up. The presence of sweet potatoes in Polynesia, indicating early Polynesian contact with the New World. Traces of coca and nicotine found in Egyptian mummies. Whoa. If ancient Egyptians had contact with the Americas, like what? Implying travel to the New World by ancient Egyptians. A memorial tablet erected in Mobile Bay, Alabama, stating that Welsh explorer Prince Madog landed on the shores of Mobile Bay in 1170. Roman coins found in North America. You gotta be kidding. We're gonna have to look that up. Carthaginian coins inscribed with maps of the ancient world, including the Americas. Ho 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 ho. These coins had maps of the world, and these maps included the Americas. Carthaginians before 1492. African plant species in the Americas. Stylistic similarities between decorative motifs of ancient China and those of the ancient Maya. Two different people in two different places of the world can have similar design ideas, but depending on what those motifs are, it's unlikely. <laughs> An image in a southern Indian temple in a temple in India of a goddess holding maize like corn from the New World, which is far away from India. Genetic links between Native Americans and Icelanders. Wow, well done, Iceland. Proving the Viking explorer Leif Erikson reached the Americas 500 years before. Okay, so if anybody knows of any one of these, it's the Leif Erikson, which is 500 years before Columbus. I think that we've learned a lot. If you really want to pursue the connection of the ancient world thing, there are some really interesting, if not well agreed upon, ideas in a book by Graham Hancock called Magicians of the Gods. He has this idea that there was this incredibly advanced civilization. Some of them survived. Most of the survivors were hunter-gatherers. These people from the very advanced civilization went around and shared some of their knowledge, resources, all these things. He collects ancient mythology. He looks at connections between archaeological and art motifs that he finds that it's a very similar thing in ancient Turkey and what he finds in Central and South America. These kind of links that across the Atlantic Ocean emerged at about the same time. Similar mythology. He's a great writer. It's worth it for the archaeological history side of things because even if the way he connects it together isn't correct necessarily all the time. He brings up all these interesting things about the ancient world, even site by site, it's very interesting, let alone the possible connection of the ancient world that he brings up. It's Graham Hancock, check it out. The point is, the point is, 
Okay, so this whole segment here goes out to my friend Nick. This previous, the segment that part that is red that you've already watched goes out to my buddy Nick, who when he was working on his bachelor's degree in history, and he and I were housemates, and he said, I'm gonna write a series called Everything is Bunk. I don't know, it's like maybe he was a little bit cynical. Oh yeah, history is bunk, he said. And he said, I'm gonna write one called Science is Bunk. He even said, I remember this specifically, I'm gonna write one called Circumnavigation is Bunk. These are probably some of the things that he was thinking about back then when he said that to me, and I was just like, <laughs> yeah, keep it real.